Okay, so we got the uh, turning operations all done and ready to go. Now all we got left to do is we want to cut that 3.2 by 10 thread per inch thread right here on this diameter. So that's the next step. Let's go ahead and let's cut our threads. Okay, so we're going to go up here to the drop down with our tool paths. Oops, sorry. Okay, and if you can imagine, we're going to pick thread. Okay. All right. Now, for the tool, let's go ahead into our parts here. We're going to pick a right hand OD threading tool right here. Okay, just the generic default tool. And then we're going to come over. This is going to be tool three. Since we only we didn't go get a 35 degree tool, so unlike the book, the book says tool four, it's going to be tool three. Uh, we're going to come in. We're going to set our spindle speed at whatever that may be. Uh, you know, it's going to be standard by whatever we tell it the inch per rev is. Okay, so in this case, if we're doing a 10 thread per inch, all right, 10 threads per inch, we would want to take 10 or for our inch per minute, or we could do this. We could say inch per rev, okay, and, okay. So when we switch that to inch per rev, what that does is basically, when we go to the next page, you'll see, we're gonna tell how many threads per inch we want, and it's automatically gonna adjust this number. It's grayed out right now, I can't do anything. So let's go ahead and RPM, let's just tell it that we're gonna do, I don't know, 200 should be fine. Let's just leave it. 200 and 200 for our max. Let's turn on our coolant. And then we're going to tell it that we're going to cut our 3, 3.2-10 right hand threads. We're going to go to the thread shape parameters. And there you see how many threads per inch we want. Okay, so we're going to say 10. And as soon as I change that number, if I go back to this previous page, notice that my feed rate per rev changed. Okay, it's grayed out, but it changes it based on one over TPI. So 100 thou per revolution. Um, all of our included angle, we're gonna leave that as it is. Everything looks good here. The major diameter, okay, if we type in 3.2, okay. And what we can do here is We can, since this isn't a common size thread, what we can do is, you know, if we go to the thread table and I look for a 3.2 major, that's not, not going to be here. So what it can let you do is, you know, your thread formulas are in here. You can hit compute from formula. Okay, we're going to tell it 10 threads per inch, major diameter, 3.2, and it's going to calculate the minor. You know, we would have to come in here and tell it this is going to be a UN thread. Okay. So we would set that and then we'd check mark and it would pull in our minor diameter here. Okay, and then here's your thread depth. So it gives you all of that information that we need. <clears throat> okay, so the start position of the thread. Well, I'm gonna pick this point right here. And then the end position, how far back do I want it to go? I'm gonna pick this position at the bottom of this angle. Okay, basically the end of that. And then I'm just gonna tell it, I'm gonna make that a nice whole number, negative 3.5. All right. Looks good. I'm gonna shut the allowances off. Okay. And then we're gonna to go to the thread cut parameters. Now we've got the shape of the thread all picked out. Okay, NC code format. A lot of times we struggle with the post if the code is not coming out correctly for a can cycle. I'll switch this to longhand. You know, just it's going to post out longhand code, but that's okay. Um, it keeps if you're using a, a generic post on a machine tool, that's usually going to be the fix. We'll leave it on can since we're just automating this. We're going to tell it equal areas, okay? As it's cutting, determine the cut depths from equal areas. That's basically how much of the side and the depth of the tool are we using. We're going to set the determine number of cuts from the first cut amount and let's set that to 10 thou 
stock clearance. It's going to come a hundred thou off in between cuts as it retracts back. Then we're going to go down to the overcut. Okay, and on the overcut, we are going to. Okay, we're going kind of off. I'm reading the book here. Sorry about that. Um, but what it's going to have to do is if we go in this field and we type S, and then we hit Entity, or Enter, it's going to have us pick two points. So we're going to tell it to overcut from here to right here. And basically that means it's going to go another 350 thou back into the relief group, which should be fine. All right, now we'll go in and we'll leave the pull off at zero. I don't want the thread to get shallower as it gets down to the bottom. I want a full thread all the way into our relief groove over here. So we're going to leave that at zero. Um, the amount of the last cut, let's tell it that we want it to be like 5 thou. And we'll do one spring cut, nice little zero pass at the end. Should be good. Got a couple hundred thousandths for the spindle to get up to speed. That's what the acceleration is all about. And everything else, 29 degree lead angle. I like it. Let's check mark out. And there you should see it generate. Now it only shows the one tool path there, but if we watch this in back plot, you'll see it does several passes to cut this thread. So if I zoom in, you can see how it's cutting the thread 10 thou at a time. Okay, so that's the threading. We watch this in verify now. And there you can see your thread form. And if I go over here and shut that off, there you go. You can actually th see the threads on the solid model. So that's how threading works. Um, I hope everybody was able to follow along. If not, rewind the video and go back to the part you need to catch up on. And have a great day.